Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode in my classic horrors of the 30s, and not so classic, that I'm doing lately. And uh, today I want to talk about one of my all-time favorites of uh, any of these from the 1930s. And it may be the very best, I think. Uh, at least the best of the 1931 films, and I'm talking about Paramount's, not Universal, but Paramount Pictures, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, although Robert Louis Stevenson, who was the author of the story, I think he pronounced him Jekyll, actually, was this supposed to be the pro uh, correct pronunciation. I'm going to cover this up here. This is the Spencer Tracy version from 1941. I do not care for the Spencer Tracy version. Uh, it's okay, it's, it's good, it's good enough, but it's not great like this one. Uh, no, the one here by, with Frederick March as the dual doctor is absolutely the only way to go, okay? Uh, I don't even know where to begin with this thing. You know, a lot of people say that, oh, you know, a lot of times there's certain films that aren't really th that exciting in the 1931 era. You know, like, say, Dracula. You know, we all love Dracula, but... Uh, you know, it's kind of slow, kind of stagey. People try to excuse it sometimes and say, well, the reason for that is because, you know, it's an early 1930s horror film, you know, and they were just finding out how to go about the sound and how to set cameras up and everything. And after all, you know, this is like uh, the first talking horror picture, Dracula, right? Baloney, baloney. It's the director. It's all in the direction because I take my hat off <laughs> to the director of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Ruben Mamoulian, he's fantastic in this. He is, the, his special effects, his camera setups, his the tricks that he does with the camera are, are way ahead of, the, of, of their time for 1931. And this really was made in 1931. I believe it came out on New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve of 1931. So it's, it's often considered a 1932 film. Uh, this one here is billed as the 1932 version. I consider it a 31 film. And definitely the best, in my book, of the 31 films, including Dracula by Universal, including Frankenstein from Universal. I think this is the best. Why do I say that? Because it retains its power to horrify. It has some terror in this film. And uh, as acted by Frederick March as, as Jekyll and Hyde, who won an Academy Award, by the way, the only monster ever to win an Academy Award, up until, I think, Silence of the Lambs, and I'm not even sure if Anthony Hopkins got the award. Somebody tell me I remember it, uh, the, the movie got it, but, you know, monster actors didn't get awards, and, oh, it's fantastic. He actually has the perfect mix between the, the, the righteous, reserved, loved, well-meaning Dr. Jekyll and then the evil Mr. Hyde. The way it's presented in this film is that he has a formula, a potion that he drinks, if you will, I use the word potion, formula that separates the good to the bad and makes two different personalities. He wants to see if he can separate uh, the evil from the good. And uh, Mr. Hyde is a joy to watch here. He's both funny, he has some humorous scenes with Mr. Hyde, but when he's on for the terror, he's on. He's brutal, he's criminal, he's sadistic. He's absolutely uh, horrifying at times. And uh, actually it can still un unsettle you a little bit in some of the scenes in this film. And of course, as the story goes, although uh, Dr. Jekyll means well, as time goes on, he can't control the effect. He's kind of addicted and he, he, he can't control Mr. Hyde. And that's the idea behind it. And boy, is this an intense film. It really is, especially for its time. And I have to give big kudos to an actress in this film, Miriam Hopkins, who is absolutely both delightful, sensual, and absolutely uh, terrified in some of her scenes. She plays, uh, I, I'll say loosely a prostitute, if you will, uh, who <laughs> winds up getting entangled with Mr. Hyde. And once she does, their scenes together... Hyde and uh, Ivy, Champagne Ivy, as Miriam's character is known here. It, it's it's real. It's really tense. It's really tense and really scary. Uh, the moments with the two of them, and they're just really fantastic together. She's an asset to this film. This film was made pre-code, which means uh, now I don't want to excite some of you perverts out there, but there's very <laughs> there's mild early nudity in here. You, 
half nudity, kind of, you can see. If you look at some early scenes in this, uh, when uh, Ivy is, is in her bed, let's put it that way. And uh, this particular version of the movie, the only one really that's available right now that I know of, uh, it, it was good for its time. This is from the, I believe, the very early 2000s, I think. Uh, in the late 90s, I think early 2000s, this particular release. It, unfortunately, it's not available on Blu-ray, and it could use a little more restoration. So we have to deal with this. It's not not unwatchable by any means, but boy, oh boy, it would it be nice to get a really, really good, crisp, clean Blu-ray HD copy of this. Now, prior to this, the movie was out on VHS, and there was a little bit cut out of it. There was a, especially a jump in the dialogue, I remember, a crucial point when i won't well, i won't spoil it for you but a real crucial point there was a, a glitch in the dialogue that's been fixed here and some of the sequences have been restored this is a film that's still said to have other scenes that have never been restored i don't know if we're ever going to see a really complete 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 version of this but right now this is probably the most complete it's ever going to be and it's fine as it is here the only thing is uh, although the length is good and the scenes are good it would be so good as i said to have this preserved on, on better quality if the elements are up to it. I would think that if it was possible to restore this, they would have done it by now. Hopefully they can. Hopefully they can do something with this. I mean, they fixed Dracula. There were a lot of flaws in Lugosi's Dracula, and they were able to kind of really make that look great and sound great. So I think they could do something with this. Yeah, this delivers the goods, people. I think if you're looking for an early 1930s film that still could be kind of creepy and still could be kind of unsettling at times, and intense i would say this one paramount's 1931 or 30 early 32 if you like dr jekyll or jekyll and mr hyde now you can see how i'm raving about this movie obviously on a scale of four stars i give it a full four out of four stars so please if you like early horror movies and you never saw this and you like the old monsters give this a shot i doubt you'll regret it later